bear with me as we read for a lengthy reading. Romans chapter 11, beginning at verse number 1. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burned among them, and consumed them that were in the uttermost part of the camp. The people cried unto Moses, and when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. And he called the name of the place Tiberah, because the fire of the Lord burned among them. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting, and the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlics. But now our soul is dried away. There was nothing at all besides this mountain before our eyes. Right. Skip down to verse number 18. <clears throat> and say, Thou to the people, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. Ye shall eat flesh, for ye, for ye have wept in the years of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you flesh, and you shall eat. You shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, nor ten days, nor twenty days, but even a whole month until it come out of your nostrils, and it be loathsome unto you, because that ye have despised the Lord, which is among ye, and have wept before him, saying, why came we forth of each? Amen. You may be seated. Yeah. You'll help me preach today. Yeah. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Yeah. You. you. Show. show. I said show. show. Look. Good. 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 Turn to another neighbor. Say, neighbor, no matter how good I think you look, it's not about you, but it's all about Jesus. I want to talk about, for a few minutes, I want to talk about it's raining quail. It's raining quail. It's raining quail. For 400 years, the people of Israel had not known what it was like to be free. For 400 years, every day, all day, they were working for Pharaoh. For 400 years, they were working in the blazing hot sun. For 400 years, they were turning straw into bricks. For 400 years, they were reminded every day, day after day, from Pharaoh that you belong to me. For 400 years, they could not go to bed when they wanted to go to bed. They could not eat when they wanted to eat. They could not talk when they wanted to talk. They were at the hands of Pharaoh. There's somebody in this room, maybe not for 400 years, maybe 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, Satan's been telling you what to do. Somebody in this room, you've been working every day in the blazing hot heat of bad attitude. You've been working, lifting, making straws into bricks uh, by hypocrisy. You've been working for Satan only to find out that I'm building on Satan's bill. I got to tell you that now is the time for you to start building on the Lord's building. The Lord's delivered you. He brought you out of bondage. 
it brought you out of Egypt, it's time for you to start working for the Lord. Amen. Israel, when they had come out of this 400 years of bondage, answering to Pharaoh, walking in the desert hot sun, working in the desert hot sun, you would think that when I came out of bondage, that everything would be all right, I'd be happy, I'd be shouting, I'd be satisfied. But Israel must have been my fellow people. Because they were delivered, but they were not satisfied. It says in Numbers chapter 11 that they were brought out of bondage, but they immediately started complaining. They started complaining because it seemed like nothing was right. Everywhere that Moses took them, it was the wrong direction. Every time Moses tried to do something, say something to them, Moses gave the wrong speech. Anything Moses wanted to do was the wrong thing. So they started complaining, and it says that God heard their complaints. When God heard your complaints, you better make sure that you got a right to be blind. I would take a fall in this room, but I don't want to embarrass anybody. I would ask you if you have the right to complain, raise your hand. But I know some of y'all would raise your hand, and I got to tell you, you don't have the right to complain. When we complain about walking, you got to understand there's some people who ain't got feet to you. When you complain, when you complain that the doctor said that you got heart problems, there's people who die from heart attacks. You don't have, you don't have a right to complain. So these people of Israel, they complained and God heard their murmuring. He heard their complaint. And the text says, the text says that he sent a fire. But what I like about God is that God did not burn everybody. The text says that he only burned the people who were on the outside of the camp. That's not good news to somebody, but that's, that's news to me to know that God burned the people on the outside of the camp. Listen, what Moses was saying, Moses was saying that there's some people who are on the outside of the church. What I mean by that, you can't make up your mind whether you're going to be committed to God or committed to the world. You're on the outside of ministry. There's the people who are, who are uncommitted. You ain't made up your mind and whether I'm going to be committed or not, whether I'm going to work for the Lord or not, whether I'm going to do or not. So you said, I don't want to really be a sinner, but at the same time, I don't want to be a saint. So what you say you're going to do is, I'm going to scout the fence. I'm going to be a part-time Christian. I got news for you. You can't be a part-time Christian because you don't serve a part-time God. Being a Christian is a full-time duty. Being a child of God is an everyday thing. You can't be a fair weather Christian. You can't look outside and say it's raining. I ain't gonna be a Christian today. <laughs> when a God looks out the balconies of heaven and says it's raining, I ain't gonna be God today. <laughs> they were complaining. They were complaining. God heard them. He burned the outer part of the camp, but just true to form, just like my fellow people. They still wouldn't say you would think when God started burning, burning the outside of the camp, the people on the inside of the camp would have said, oh my, I'm going to change. Oh my, I'm going to do something different. Oh my, I'm not going to do nothing plenty because I don't want to be burned up. But you know what they did? You guessed it. They started complaining even more. They were thinking about the people who got burned up. They said, listen, they told, they told Moses, I remember a time when we were in Egypt, and we were eating good in Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. You, you missed the whole point of it. It don't matter how good 
If it was meant to be, it would have been 30 years ago. Right. Kept telling all they kept the plan and said to Moses, uh, we remember time, we had all of this stuff, but they were in bondage. Fast forward, fast forward to verse number 18 after they were complaining. God heard them complaining. They said, we ain't got nobody to feed us. We ain't got no food. We want some flesh. We want some meat. Ain't that just like my fellow people? <laughs> All right, I, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I can't just make it on cucumbers. It's, it's Sunday. We got a 3 o'clock service. I'm going to need a chicken and some pepper. Trying to do, God was trying to keep them healthy. 
Sometimes we don't realize, and I appreciate the uh, Dr. Carol and Sister Long and all y'all who try to look, look at the pastor. Pastor, you kind of robust. <laughs> So we're going to help them eat healthy so they bring me apples and oranges and stuff like that. And I eat them. I, I'm a preacher. I eat them, but that's just a snack for me. That ain't no kind of food, Brother Ben. I don't tell them I eat it. I'll be happy when I be eating it. But I just, man, I show them home.
you know all the dead horses that are mine. He said, Lord, you're going to supply for a month. You know how many of us it is? Well, you know, that sounds like Big Mama now. <laughs> or it sounds like me talking to Big Mama. Big Mama, you know how many of us is in here? But Big Mama knew how to make a meal out of nothing. Right. I mean, she could, make, she could take that one chicken right. and you have chicken and dressing, right. chicken and corn, Chicken salad. You say, Big Mama, you made all that with one chicken. Yeah. You gonna feed all 13 of them? Yeah. That's how good God is. He tells, he tells Moses, as a matter of fact, do you think my arms are too short, my hands are too little, that I can't do what I say I'm gonna do? My God. But here's here's the miracle. Here's the miracle. They, number one, they were around the sea. Quail don't hang around seas. That's miracle number one. Miracle number two, he said he was going to give them quail for a whole month. In today's translation, there were, there were over a million quail that fell out of the sky. And in those days, that meant that they had quail to swim waist deep. They were swimming literally in quail. Good God Almighty, ain't God good? God will give you so much that you'll have you swimming in it. God will have you waist deep in it. That everybody could just walk around and pick up the quail and start eating. That's how good God is. But they were the, the supply of quail came because of their complaint. Now you gotta watch out when you start complaining. Because the other side of this is that they had so much quail that, that the Bible says that it was gonna start coming out their nose. Have you ever had so much? God gave you so much that you said, Lord, I can't take this no more. I gotta get in my seat. Y'all don't know when to shout. I'm, I'm going to my seat. Because y'all don't know when to shout. God will give you so much that you don't even have room enough to receive it. Malachi says, I'll put out one blessing that you don't have room enough to receive it. Even in their complaining, God blessed them. He blessed them so much more, so much so, that they said, I can't take this no more. Stop, Lord. I can't take it no more. Has the Lord blessed anybody when you just can't take it anymore? Every time I turn around, God keep on blessing me. Yeah. 